Hello everyone, my name is Brett, and sometimes I wear a beret, and I think it's high time we talk again about Nerf Limited, because a lot has happened with the line since I last talked about it on my channel, and ironically, by waiting too long, even more blasters have been added to the line. So there's a lot of blasters to cover, and I think it's important that I touch on this again because my thoughts about Nerf Limited overall, the Nerf LMTD series, has not changed, but evolved, because I think I have a better understanding now about what Nerf Limited is. And to refresh your memory, here's what Nerf Limited is in their own words. Nerf Limited is a new premium and special edition fan-targeted line from Nerf, bringing to life some of the most iconic items from video games and entertainment. Now that blurb was included in the Mandalorian Blaster, the first Nerf Limited blaster to hit the market. And when I say first, I'm excluding the Travis Scott tie-in, which was the AR Goosebumps, because I don't think that technically was like on Nerf or Hasbro Pulse's site, so it was kind of like their own thing, but it did bear the Nerf limited seal of approval. Interesting blaster that was. I actually already looked at that way back when. But I do kind of owe you guys an update on the Mandalorian blaster. I did sort of hype it up on my channel because I talked about it quite a bit before it was released, and then I was one of the later people to actually get it because Hasbro Pulse was later than Amazon, and then you could start ordering it off of Amazon before the Hasbro Pulse orders even shipped. No matter how you slice it, how you dice it, the Mandalorian blaster was a bit of a sticky situation for Nerf. It did not go very well. And if you still want to check it out for yourself, well, you can go and buy one. Yeah, you can still get the limited edition. I think you can get it on Amazon, actually. It's not on Hasbro Pulse. Or you can get the cheaper orange version, the Mango Mando, as many have called it, which has no lights and sounds and doesn't come in a premium box. Admittedly, I did have a lot of plans for the Mandalorian Blaster, and I did have a few videos that I wanted to make for you guys talking about it because I had a lot to say after spending $120 on that blaster. I'm a big Star Wars fan. I'm a big fan of the Mandalorian TV show. And this blaster, in my opinion, did not live up to the hype. Everyone else got it first, so I knew exactly what I was getting when it finally showed up. The premium detailing being the icing on the cake that was, ugh. It's silver Sharpie. Guys, that's what it is. It's it's Sharpie. This is not the premium detailing we were told about. Now, I did post some gameplay footage with that blaster, and I did have a lot of fun using it. Definitely helped that it was a single shot only round, but there was something quite enjoyable about using the breech-loaded Mandalorian blaster that had sound effects when you pulled the trigger, when you loaded it. I mean, how could I not have fun? And that's why I love using a bunch of different types of blasters. Ryan, right, what's your right? This is the way. No! Oh, sorry. <laughs> but even I had to kind of halt the brakes on everything because one very important thing happened. It broke. Unacceptable. And um, I've started seeing some more people have similar experiences. I've seen posts on Reddit where people have said, hey, look, my Mando broke. What do I do about that? The answer is you do nothing. You are dead. The blaster is dead. I salute you. And right here on my shelf is all I have that remains of my Mandalorian blaster. The broken breach that after a 1v1 in the dark with Ryan of Silver Fox Industries using his Mandalorian blaster, uh, this disappeared into the night. That's right guys, my Mando blaster has officially disintegrated. It was blown up from orbit. Or actually, I gave it to a friend so they could reshell it now that they had a non-functional blaster so they wouldn't feel so guilty about destroying a $120, now $125 blaster just to put something else inside of it. In Nerf's defense, or I should say in Hasbro's defense, I did reach out about this problem, you know, non-functional blaster, what do? And they did offer to send me a replacement. I filled out all the details, I got the shipping information to send it back, and, and I just didn't because I was just, I was so discouraged and I was so done with it. But important note then, if you do for some reason have this blaster and you have a similar breakage or anything like that, because mine was after very minimal use, please reach out. They should take care of you, Hasbro, and you should be able to get a replacement. I watched a lot of reviews on the Mandalorian blaster from not just Nerf focused channels, but 
kind of Star Wars enthusiast channels, people who definitely were interested in buying this blaster because it was advertised as, you know, Mandalorian blaster. And it was funny to see their takes on it because while obviously for, you know, foam flinging enthusiasts, the performance wasn't really all that there, what was funny was to see others tear it apart for different reasons. The handle was like not long enough and a lot of people really had problems with that. Premium and special edition fan targeted line from Nerf bringing to life some of the most iconic items from video games and entertainment. Nerf limited series is clearly trying to balance the Nerf foam flinging side of things and the actual enthusiasts of whatever brand they're tying in. So you've got the cosplay element, you know, the like sci-fi enthusiasts, whatever they're bringing in, in this case, a TV show from Star Wars, and then you've got foam flinging. And finding that balance has clearly been a challenge. So the Mando blaster seemed to kind of fall short in both categories. As a nerf blaster, a single shot breech loading is kind of cool, but I had problems with it using it legitimately over time. And then the Star Wars enthusiasts also had a lot to say. If you still like the Mandalorian blaster, if you bought it with your own money and you think it's a beautiful looking blaster, you love the sound effects, you love the breech loading system and it hasn't broken on you yet, that is totally fine. I'm certainly not here to bash people for what they like. I just wanna make sure that what we're actually getting that is a tie-in from a franchise that I like actually makes sense and is worth the money. Cause there's been a lot of Nerf Star Wars blasters out there. And this one eh, was pretty pricey and didn't really deliver on a lot of the promises. Mandalorian blaster. You've probably heard a lot of that before. Why are you still listening? Let's talk about the one that just came out. Nerf Limited Aliens M41A Blaster. The 95 United States dollars Aliens Pulse Rifle ironically came out early in Europe in Australia, so yes, they were able to spoil it for all of us US-based folks. Now it's in my hands. People do like to mock the premium packaging verbiage that they throw on all of these blasters. I do think it's important that they specify that all of these are going to have something special on the box because yes, I think having this kind of box or even the one that came with the Mando Blaster is worth money, right? Like for a collector, that is definitely worth some money. So again, you've got that hybrid mix of there's your Nerf logo, but here is something that's more aliens. You've got all the aliens markings or the, you know, for the Colonial Marines. You've got the pulse rifle right there. Then you've got Nerf darts and you've got Wayland yutani Corp right there. So again, just trying to find that balance of something that feels Nerf, but also feels accurate to like the show. And a nice little show, movie. I know what I'm talking about. Pulse rifle up top with other little logos. You've got the alien stains through there because acid for blood. This nice little protective piece as well to actually protect the blaster when it's in the box in case it got crushed. And then of course, there it is, blaster, and then your darts are stored right in here, or at least that's where I did, along with your instructions. The choice to include three Mega Accu Strike rounds was definitely a good one. I mean, these are definitely going to fly a little bit straighter. They look pretty cool as well. I don't think you can buy that color scheme anywhere else. And this is the one time I will say, yes, you can call them Nerf dart bullets because they definitely look like more realistic. The decision to use C batteries in this blaster is a little bit disappointing. There's the ammo counter on the side, mag goes in, automatically goes to 10. Hold the button on the top, beep, 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 beep. The batteries go in on the left side of the blaster here, and the speaker, the lone speaker, is on this side of the blaster. So if you're right-handed, it won't be too loud on your ears because it's shooting out this way, because it can be pretty loud. Um, we are a little bit over the 10 round capacity, so I'll go back down. Sweet music. Load the front barrel shotgun, prime that up, and let's just fire through it. My batteries are dying. Oh, there we go. Well, yeah, my batteries are clearly dying on this thing, but hey, at least I can still... I mean, this blaster basically is exactly as advertised. It's got an ammo counter on the side, which is adjustable, which is great. It does have its mega shotgun front barrel up here, which works. It's got the sound effects. It's in the power loader paint scheme because I couldn't do it too realistic. When you're out of darts in the actual blaster and the ammo counter goes down to zero, it makes a different sound telling you that you are in fact out of darts. Yeah, that guy. 
The biggest and most appropriate gripe is that this magwell is not compatible with other magazines without modification. Why didn't they just make it, you know, using the same magazine compatibility as any other like existing Nerf blaster? That's clearly an answer that I don't have because that's definitely what makes the ammo counter more appealing if you have a higher capacity magazine or if you have more magazines that you're ready to put in because as it is, you're gonna need more of these and they don't sell these separately. Of course, it only comes with the one. And more of the initial reactions to this blaster were, why did they choose the power loader as a paint scheme? Why didn't they do the realistic paint scheme? Okay, that answer was pretty obvious. They, they can't do that. But people were wondering then, well, okay, well, why this? I could see why they would do that from a fan perspective, at least in their mind, like, oh, people who are fans of Aliens recognize the power loader. We'll add that to the blaster and then it still fits into the Aliens, you know, theme. I would argue in this sense, they should have gone in the route of more leaned on the Nerf side of things and given this like a Nerf themed like paint scheme. It took about 0.2 seconds for the enthusiasts, the Aliens enthusiasts, to receive this blaster and drop their paint on it. And there have been some amazing paint jobs for this blaster. I didn't grow up with aliens in theaters, but when I finally saw the movie, holy smokes, was I hooked. And that's why this blaster speaks to me. Would I use this in a game? Probably. But hey, speaking of aliens, how about the Covenant? <laughs> Nerf Limited Halo Needler, available to ship approximately 11-1. And yes, they are officially shipping now, probably through the rest of the year. 99, 99, 100 USD, and it looks like you can, you can still buy it online. Hmm, so I didn't pre-order this one. I said, you know what? I'm not a huge Halo fan. I'm a fan of Alien, so I'm gonna pre-order that one, but I think I'm gonna wait on future Nerf Limited releases because I don't need to buy all of these. You know what's happened since then? I really like Halo. There's a little Master Chief just hanging out on my shelf. I got a little energy sword back there. But people have the Needler in hand, so I can see exactly what it's all about. And I'm still kind of on the fence about it. $100 is certainly not insignificant. The fire rate of the Needler is slow. OMG, it's not game accurate, cancel the darn thing. But if it was a little too fast, you've only got 10 rounds. So I can kind of see why it would need to be a little bit slowed down. It's also kind of loud based off of the videos that I've seen. Why are they using darts if they couldn't have a high capacity like the Needler Endgame? Why don't they use like rival rounds or hyper rounds? I've seen that opinion before, I don't understand it. The Needler uses needles and darts kind of look like needles. I mean, the Boomco Needler version literally had the Boomco straws on the top. That makes sense. That's probably the most logical blaster here to take darts. But when it comes to the aesthetic of this blaster, holy smokes, did they get it right. It looks great. I mean, this is what they showed in the promo art and now in hand, people can confirm. It's a great looking needler. The needles on top, while you don't wanna play with them too much, you know, for fear of breaking them, it's nice that they don't like just fracture off because they're a little bit bendy. They, you know, will lose their lights after you fire through the blaster. If you have to compare the sizes, which more Halo enthusiasts have, it's a little bit smaller than what it would be in real life compared to some other props on the market but it's more than a prop now, it's a functional prop. And while it is a little bit loud, there is something special about this blaster. And I think Nerf actually did get this one right when it comes to the Nerf limited goal. I had a friend who told me, hey, have you seen that they're making a Nerf Halo blaster? And I said, yes, I have. And he was super positive about it. So would I recommend this blaster to a non-Halo enthusiast? No, of course not. What are, you, what are you thinking? Like every other blaster that's come before, but this, you know, especially, it literally looks like the Needler. They did an excellent job of copying what the game looks like to the point where the handle may not even be that comfortable, ironically enough. But so far, the reviews of this blaster I've seen from actual Halo enthusiasts are very positive, which is great to see. Nerf Limited Star Wars Boba Fett's EE3 Blaster, available approximately March 1st, 2023, 110 United States dollars. I'll admit I forgot about this one, and I already said I'm a Star Wars fan. So I don't know how you're supposed to interpret that. Four dart cartridges that I think means it's just a single fire, like single shot blaster, but it has a cartridge and then you shoot it out because it doesn't have room to fit four darts out at once. The paint scheme is once again finding that like fan side where it's, hey, here's Boba Fett now on the blaster because you can't again make it like all dark colors. I still wonder if this one would have been better in like a Nerf paint scheme, like a Nerf Boba Fett blaster. The enthusiasts are going to paint this one regardless. 
the functionality of it is also kind of curious. I'm waiting to reserve judgment on this one. I'm not really sure how I feel about it compared to others. $110 is a lot once again. Clearly that Star Wars license is quite pricey, but I'm curious what fans are going to say. Nerf Limited Destiny Galar Horn Blaster. Available Q1 of 2023, $185. Okay, admittedly, I forgot about this one too because it's not actually on Hasbro Pulse. It's not in the Nerf Limited series. It's only on the Bungie store where it gives more specifics. And now we've waited long enough where we've seen pictures of it and it's, holy smoke, it's freaking huge. Four feet long, one to one scale is what they claim. Mega dart shells, three shells with three darts each. Again, something kind of different. That's kind of cool. I don't think I'm able to pre-order this blaster. I, I forget all the specifics. I think you had to do something in game to like unlock the pre-order. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section down below, but I've actually never played Destiny or Destiny 2. So this one was not ever going to be something that I really like looked to get. This blaster might be one of the best combinations of nerf and source material. The one-to-one -one scale replica with what I would consider to be a Nerf-inspired paint job. The hardcore enthusiasts might get around to painting this one too, but even just for the shell of this thing, I know $185 is a lot. It's probably the priciest on this entire list, but I don't even know how much a prop shell of the Galar Horn would go for. I hope it's worth the money. And I also hope those three round mega shells are pretty interesting. It'll be really cool to see them implement that on other future blasters and not just this $185 Special Destiny 2 tie-in. Nerf Limited Star Trek Starfleet Type 3 and Type 2 Phaser Blasters, available approximately November 24th, 2023. Okay, that's a year from now. 120 United States dollars features two blasters this time, Type 3 Phaser and Type 2 Phaser. All right, I'm gonna level with you. I don't really care about this one too much. And mostly that's because I'm not a huge Star Trek fan. I've seen many a Star Treks. I have trekked a star once in my life but I am not a Trekkie at heart. I am not the target audience for this one, but I will admit it's cool that they finally do include a second blaster. And I know a lot of people are almost more interested in that little phaser. The paint scheme on this one has received a bit more scrutiny from folks. And I have seen it also from Star Trek enthusiasts. The uh, type three phaser, the bigger one, has some Borgification on the back. That's not how the Borg assimilation works. So I don't know if they uh, missed the mark on that detail, but, I'm not sure if I'm in love with the color scheme they went with on this one. Like, I can see more of a Nerf influence. I don't know, something about this one, it almost feels like too basic. It's a weird adaptation of what would be a Star Trek phaser, but again, I don't have as much skin in this game. $120 for two blasters. Um, I don't know how you would distribute, like how much do you think the type two phaser is versus the type three? Single dart into the small phaser, prime it and then fire. And then for the bigger one, it looks like it's actually an internal magazine. But also if I go into Hasbro Pulse, it says sold out, but it says pre-order by 1231, 2022. Bruh. We're over a month away. What do you mean? Now I want to pre-order it just in spite of them. I'm assuming that's just a mistake. Maybe it's still available on Amazon. You should better check on that if you're actually interested in this one. Nerf Limited G.I. Joe G.I. 40 Blaster. Available approximately August 1st, 2023 for 80 United States dollars. Eh, okay, so this is the first one that really loses me. Up to this point, I think we've done a good job of establishing what is Nerf Limited. Original designs with unique shells, sometimes unique, never before seen loading features from Nerf. Th this, this is not that. Th what, what the frick is this? <laughs> this is just a GI Joe blaster for some reason in the Nerf Limited line. It's a Nerf Hyperfire repaint, a blaster we haven't seen in a long time, but now also it only includes a 10 round magazine. Cobra on one side, it's the G.I. Joe's on the other. The box also claims to have some other interesting stuff too. Like the box does look cool and has like a little, oh, a Nerf themed comic, or at least a, a front page, a real American hero. I'm not seeing the value in this one so much, partially as well because Hasbro owns G.I. Joe. This one just feels a little bit disingenuous. Wait, this one says sold out as well. What, what, what am I supposed to order that by? 40th anniversary of G.I. Joe. Celebrate the 40th anniversary by not being able to pre-order it. I don't think this should have been a Nerf Limited blaster. So let's continue down the list of what actually is, uh, you know, supposed to be here. Bruh. Nerf Pro Gel Fire Refill. Orange. Why is that one in here? 
No, seriously, why is this one in the nerf limited category? And assuming I post this video soon enough, the last one, nerf limited League of Legends Jinx Fishbones Blaster, available approximately December 31st, 2023, pre-order by January 3rd, 2023, $170. Not the most expensive on the list, but definitely still pricey. $170 for the Fishbones Blaster. Now, my League of Legends knowledge and involvement is uh, this much. I've heard a lot of great things about Arcane, and maybe I'll actually get around to watching that series uh, closer to Christmas this year. But I do know people still play League of Legends. I don't know how many people still play League of Legends, but I'm wondering how much of uh, this blaster is meant to focus on arcane fans versus like the game fans. Now this one does six shots of three round elite dart bursts. So for a total of 18 darts, and it is very similar to then the judge, the, the judge. And I've seen mentioned that this is supposed to be a rocket launcher. So I'm not really sure why the decision was to use darts instead of rockets, other than up to this point, look at every other nerf limited blaster and tell me which one is using rockets. Answer, none of them. They're using darts, they're using mega rounds, that's it. But the shell looks pretty darn cool. Uh, I only see renders of it here, nothing actually in person yet, but it's cool that the little mouth can open and close. You prime the fin on the top, just like that Roblox blaster. Reloading's gonna be a bit of a pain, but at least it's front loading. Just be careful you don't chomp your hand off. $170 is, is pretty steep though. If you think it's worth that to you, then perhaps go out and pre-order it. But that's it folks, we're finally caught up we now have a better understanding of what Nerf Limited is. So what is it? Nerf Limited is a premium and special edition fan targeted line from Nerf bringing to life some of the most iconic items from video games and entertainment. If there's anything that we can start to take away is that they're clearly putting additional detail into these blasters. The Mando Blaster is a prime example of what can go wrong when you try and advertise that. But it seems like going forward with all of the actual in-person models from the Aliens Pulse Rifle to now the Needler that people have in hands, it's pretty clear that that first attempt is no longer going to be par of course. There are still plenty of details on these blasters that I feel are appropriate to criticize, but at the same time, you can't look at these blasters like any other blasters they put on the shelf. They're meant to literally target a different audience. So coming at it only from a like nerve enthusiast perspective is the wrong mindset. I admit the prices are pretty high on a lot of them. I've heard the word scam, floating around a little bit more than probably is desirable because, well, aside from, you know, some of the false advertising earlier, they're showing what you get. Here's what it looks like. Here's what it's expected to look like. We'll charge you once we ship the blaster. I mean, it might be a little bit delayed and that's, um, that's Hasbro Pulse for you, yay. That's different than actually being scammed. For my fellow performance-focused Nerf enthusiasts, hopefully it's very clear now, these blasters are not made for you. They're made for fans of the lines, and I really wish I could stop seeing people comparing them to something like, oh, well that doesn't shoot as hard as the Nexus Pro. Why is it always a Nexus Pro, guys? It's, it's completely different. They're only online pre-order exclusive, and there's plenty more to get into on whether you think that's a good idea or not. I also would prefer if it wasn't pre-order only, though ironically these keep showing up after the pre-order window for when they first start, you know, shipping out. So I guess if you do wait, it may not be the end of the world. I've talked a lot. We've talked about a lot of blasters. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below. I know Nerf Limited can be a bit divisive. Hopefully now you know what you're getting. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Subscribe for more Pulse Rifle.